Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this John Deere X300. Customer brought it in and said that it shuts off anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes randomly. Uh, after it cools down a little bit, it'll restart. He brought in a fuel pump and a couple ignition modules to get the issue taken care of. Now ignition modules going bad, heating up, and cutting out at the same time on a V-twin engine, almost out of the realm of possibility. That's not gonna be the issue. Fuel pump, Probably not either, but we're gonna go over the diagnostics and repair to get this taken care of if you have the same or a similar issue on your John Deere X300 series mower. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons as we go along if you enjoy the content. When we're doing diagnostics on an issue like this, we essentially just need to figure out what we're missing when it dies out. Is it something as simple as where it's a fuel cap vent, where the fuel pump cannot continue to pump because there's a back pressure on the tank? Very well possible. If your mower shuts off and you are to loosen the fuel cap and it fires right back up and runs fine, afterwards you would know it's something like that. It could be as simple as a bad fuel pump or a restriction in the fuel line bad fuel filter, something clogged in the pickup tube coming out of the tank. But we need to figure out what we're missing from the equation when it dies out. Are we missing fuel? If that's the case, if we take the air cleaner out and spray some starting fluid or carburetor cleaner or some fuel down in the intake when that happens and it fires right back up, then we know what we're missing is fuel. It's likely an issue where something's killing the spark. It's not going to be the ignition coils though because they're not going to both go out at the same time. You may have an issue where one goes out, but on a V-twin engine, if it's heating up and shutting off, it's not an ignition coil issue. Unless one goes down and then the other goes down, they're never gonna go out at the same time, or at least in my experience, I don't ever see that. Could have a safety switch issue or an ignition switch issue. Check the battery terminals and the connections here. Make sure they're completely tight and free of corrosion. If they're not, you'll wanna redo those connections. You should not be able to grab and move the uh, terminals or the connections at all. That one's a little bit loose. I'm going to tighten that up. And I loosened it up when I moved it, but still it wasn't tight enough to hold it in place. That means that's not a real good connection. Check that first as that can definitely cause problems with the ECU on this. And you'll also want to check where this ground wire connects to the engine and make sure the same. Clean, free of corrosion, and tight is what we're looking for at all these places. Same thing here if you follow the positive down to the start solenoid. The mower gets all of its voltage through these two wires, the smaller ones connected to that terminal. So if that connection is bad, you're going to get funky voltage through to the rest of the mower. Otherwise, one of the most common issues on this is going to be a bad ECU that sits right up under the dash. It has one 10 millimeter bolt that holds it in. It basically controls output and input of pretty much everything on this tractor. If we wait for it to die out and we use some starting fluid up in the intake and it fires back up, we know we have one of two things. Either we're not getting fuel or good fuel to the carburetor or the fuel solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor is actually bad. We can test voltage to that by going to this green wire and making sure that we're still getting voltage to it. That was actually pretty loose making sure that we're still getting voltage to it. And if we are getting voltage to it and you don't hear it click, that's gonna be a solid issue. As soon as you turn that key to the on position, you should hear the fuel solenoid click. It means it's working. So if yours dies out and then you can turn this off and back on and you don't hear that solenoid click, it could be just a bad fuel solenoid. Fuel solenoids will heat up and go out very often. When yours dies, figure out what you're missing. What I like to do, the first test I like to do, is actually unplug the black wire here. This black wire goes to the ignition coils. That's your, that's your kill wire coming off of the tractor side. I'd like to disconnect this and see if it'll fire back up. This one, when I tested it yesterday, it ran for about 18 minutes and died out. As soon as I disconnected this wire and went to turn it back over, it actually turned over and it ran for, I don't know, a very short period and died again. I unplugged this and it fired right back up and ran perfectly. And then each time when I'm plugging it back in, 
it would kill it. So we know in this case that we are getting something on the electrical side, on the tractor side, that is killing out the spark. To check spark without a spark checker, all you've got to do is unplug your spark plug wire. Of course, you'll take your plug out and then you'll reinstall it. You're going to hold your plug against the block. Usually I like to use a rag and insulate myself. And then we're just looking for a spark in between the inside and the outside probe. That is our issue. If your issue is something with a fuel solenoid or that it is a fuel related problem, you can trace it from there. So if you're not getting fuel, you can take off the fuel line here at the fuel pump and see if it's still pumping. If it is still pumping, check the fuel quality, put it in a clear container, make sure there's no water at the bottom or it's not cloudy or anything, that it is actually a good fuel. If it's looking like a good fuel and you are getting fuel supply, chances are, if it's running on starting fluid still, and it'll fire up and just die right back out, chances are it's gonna be a fuel solenoid issue or a carburetor issue. Here we know that's not the case. We know that we either have an issue with a safety switch, with the ignition switch, or with that board. The way the safeties work on this, the seat switch is one of the only switches that actually will kill the spark. The rest of them actually kill the blades the way it's set up, unless it's an ignition switch issue where it's not sending voltage to the board. Let's check the ignition switch first. There's two tabs on the ignition switch, one on the top and one on the bottom that have to be pinched in order for this to come out of here. Kind of hard for me to get a good view of doing that, but I like to just use a screwdriver on the back side and kind of push. So we push in and then pull up on the, uh, on the other side of the switch, get one started. So I've got that side. Now I can get the other one from the bottom just with my hand and it will come right out. Perfect. Since this is an intermittent issue, we'd want to test this while it was hot, right when it shuts down. We want to put our meter on volts DC volts with a solid line and three dots underneath it. And then we're going to hook the black up to the negative battery cable. And we're going to test to the back of the switch. With it off, we should have voltage coming in on our red wire. And we do full battery voltage. Looks like 12.33 in this case. And that's to both of those red wires. They both get 12.33 or whatever the battery is with the switch off. Now we're gonna turn the switch to on. We're just gonna turn it one click. That's actually your, our light area. And we're gonna test to the red one at an angle, 11.88, that's kind of strange. Yeah, guess this battery is not real charged. So both of our yellows now have battery voltage to them and our purple doesn't. And as soon as we turn it one more click to where the lights are off, if we test to the yellow ones, we're gonna have it on the one that has two yellows going to it and we're not gonna have it on the single yellow one, which is the one that the lights go to on the back. And then when we turn it to start, will have voltage on this purple wire. I'm not gonna turn it to start, but that's your purple wire coming out the back. I don't know that we have a real good view here, but it's pretty simple. Uh, power on both of the reds, even when it's off. And then we're gonna have, when it's on with lights, we're gonna have power on the two yellows. And then with, when it's standard on, it's just gonna be the one with two yellow wires going to it. So uh, the one without two yellow wires going to it, the single yellow is not gonna have voltage with it to the standard on position. And the purple is gonna have it when you flip it over to start. Very simple. But what we would likely be losing if the ignition switch was going bad, we would be losing this double yellow. It would not have voltage uh, with the ignition switch to on or with it to uh, on with the lights on if the ignition switch was intermittently bad, if it was heating up and going bad. This switch looks brand new. Pretty sure he replaced it, uh, at least from the looks of it. Uh, from the symptoms I got, I'm almost positive I know what the issue is, but we'll go through the rest of the testing. Next is the seat switch. Same thing with the seat switch. If you're mowing along and the mower thinks you're jumping off the seat, then hey, guess what? It's gonna turn off on you. 
The seat switch is pretty easy to test. You're just going to remove the tab, pull it straight down and off. And you can test this just for testing purposes. You can actually put a jumper from here to here and that would tell you if the seat switch was your issue. If it would continue to run uh, with the blades on for an extended period of time, then it would be the seat switch that was the problem when if it would normally die instead but we're just going to test continuity from one post to the other. And you can test continuity or ohms. I'm just going to ohms here. You want zero ohms or continuity. So if you go to the little horseshoe symbol and you test between the two, you should have no connection without being sitting in the seat. And then when you're sitting in the seat, it's easy to just push on the other side. And then you've got 0, 0.00 ohms. I guess I wasn't pushing. I was. There we go. It's kind of hard to push and uh, keep this ready for the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just push in these two tabs and push the seat switch forward a little bit. So I'm actually hitting it that way. There we go. I'm not touching. Uh, both tabs here, but I'm getting a good solid connection. It's actually kind of high for an ohms reading. There it is. I think I just wasn't pushing it hard enough, but you should get virtually zero ohms between these two when you're sitting in the seat or when the seat switch is being pushed. I'm just pushing the middle, so it was pushing the switch in. Kind of a little way to cheat without having to push the seat and everything down. This seat switch is good. And I actually bypassed that during the test so I could run the blades without having to sit on it. Well, other than that, with this issue where it's actually killing the spark, there's nothing else to it. It's a pretty simple, if you look at the wiring diagram to figure that out. You always want to check their electrical connections. You can go through here uh, to each and every connection, make sure they're all good. There's no corrosion or anything. Very rarely the issue, but it is possible check all those connections. But here what we have going on is that board is actually bad. It's going bad at the same interval each time, anywhere from 18 to 25 minutes, it's turning off each and every time. Once it heats up, it's not making a good connection in the board itself. We're gonna replace that board and see how it does, but I'm sure that that's gonna solve the problem. Okay, and all we have is that one 10 millimeter. It holds the whole thing in. And it comes right down and out. And that's the whole assembly. There's nothing else to it. We can pinch here and pull the connector out. There it goes. And it's free. New board. I always use OEM for anything electrical. They do sell aftermarkets like on Amazon for heck, I think like $30 or something. But for me, it's just not worth messing with. Do you guys have good luck with them? Has anyone used those? I'd like to hear. This one says it was made 131, 2023. So it's been there for a while. There's two little tabs that this has got to go back into. Two spots up top and then your one bolt back in. Maybe if I can see it here, here we go. Perfect. Now let's give it a test and see what happens. Not a very hard repair as long as you know what you're looking for. Here we knew we weren't getting spark, so we were able to trace that down pretty quickly. There's only a couple other things that'll cause you to lose the spark on this mower. You can look at the wiring diagram. It's very easy to read uh, and it's readily available out there. Uh, this basically controls all of the electronics on your mower though. So even if your fuel solenoid is intermittently shutting down or the sparks intermittently shutting down or there's other weird things happening, many times it's gonna be this board. This board has its known issues, 
Hopefully they fixed it with the newer versions uh, and it's a little bit more withstanding to the harsh environments, but figure out if you're losing that spark or if it's a fuel issue. If it's a fuel issue and it's not the fuel solenoid, you can go through and make sure there's no restrictions, make sure it's not a fuel cap or fuel pump or stuff like that. But do not just go out and buy $300 worth of parts and start throwing them at it. Throwing parts at mowers never works. Do the diagnostics, get you a $25 meter, and you'll be able to know everything electrically about the mower there is to know and know exactly what's going on. If things are seeming kind of weird and everything's checked out, definitely check those connections. It's never a bad idea to check the connections before you uh, go as far as replacing the board. Everything here looks great. It's not something where it's a wet environment and everything's all crusty. Everything here looks perfect. So this solved the issue uh, extremely easily diagnosed and extremely inexpensive compared to throwing parts and labor at it. You don't want to do that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where he got that info, but it was bad info. There's much of that online, uh, unfortunately, but hopefully this has helped you out. If you have the same or a similar issue on your X300 series, uh, John Deere, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the content. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.